The camera on the new iPhone is incredible. Just look at these images. What makes these so good is the high number of megapixels. The iPhone 15 Pro now comes with a 48 megapixel main camera. That's four times more than the 12 megapixel camera on the iPhone 11 Pro that I've got here, which of course means it's four times as good. Okay, everything I just said was a lie. Well, not everything. The iPhone 15 does come with a 48 megapixel main camera, which is four times more than the 11 Pro. And that's it. But that doesn't mean it's four times as good. And the bigger confession is that the images at the start of this video weren't even from the iPhone 15, nor were they from the iPhone 11. In fact, they weren't from an iPhone at all. They're from a camera that's 10 years old and another that's 14 years old. And both, both only have a 12 megapixel sensor. This is one. This is the Fujifilm X-M1 that we bought on Facebook Marketplace last week for 40 quid. It's a decade old and written off as a camera that's past it by most people. But you know, you can change lenses. It's got knobs and dials for everything. A uh, flappy paddle, flappy paddle, flippy out screen, a built-in flash. Hmm. Uh, and the lens on this one goes from 16 to 50 mil. The point I'm trying to make is that the number of megapixels is far from the most important part of the camera. The lens is arguably the most important and the tiny lenses in phones are their biggest weakness. It means the phone software ends up having to do a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to making a great final image that's sharp and has depth of field. And as much as they have multiple lenses these days, they can't compete with an actual decent zoom lens, especially when a lot of the phone zooming is done digitally. Yes, it can do one, two, three, and five times zoom, but everything after and in between is digital, losing data with every step. And did you know that while Apple promotes the iPhone 15 Pro as having a 48 megapixel sensor, the ultra wide and telephoto lenses only use a 12 megapixel sensor. It's the same that's in this Fuji. Let's not even get into the Pro RAW files. They're perceived as being the phone equivalent of shooting in a RAW format used on dedicated Pro cameras, but they're not RAW files really, it seems. Apple, of course, is fairly secretive about it, but it seems to be just a marketing term for files with more information and dynamic range, coupled with some alleged AI improvements. And one of my gripes with phones is trying to use them in any kind of manual mode is just awful. But let's not pretend. Modern smartphone photos are incredible. What they achieve shouldn't be possible. It's bonkers how good they are. This video is not about bashing the latest iPhone camera. It, it has a very deserved place in the history of photography and it's earned its place at the table of debating phone versus proper camera. And they're quite capable of taking photos to make incredible social media channels. And yes, some people can even make a commercial living from shooting on their phone. The irony of all this is one of the most frequent questions I get asked is, what camera should I get? And my most common reply is, just use your phone. Why? Because a lot of the time when asked what they'll be photographing, the answer is my family or my dogs. And when I then ask why they want to get a new camera, the answer is usually, I just want to take better photos. And I have to be honest with people, which can be awkward, because the answer to taking better photos is not a slightly better camera. A few extra megapixels or an extra lens on your smartphone will not suddenly transform your dog walk photos into something that will earn a place in National Geographic. Most people aren't going to get lower to the ground to get better angles and composition of their subjects. Neither are they going to find the best way to light them or consider what aperture would really suit the shot and give the best depth of field. You know what I'm saying. They just want to press the button and capture a moment. And that's totally fine. That's exactly why we should have cameras on our phones that live in our pockets most of the time. But we're all suckers for thinking there's something new and better, which will give us better results. The sad truth is you can get a newer iPhone with more megapixels and no one will notice the difference. You might even get an expensive mirrorless pro camera and they still might not notice the difference because at the end of the day, the biggest upgrade you can give to your photography is the operating system of the person taking the photo. And that's you in case that wasn't clear. If you really want to take better photos, the best thing you can do is take 
more photos. Look at more photos, work out what you like and why, learn new techniques, try new styles, and maybe even buy a dedicated camera to take photos of what you love to take photos of. It doesn't matter if it's your dog, your child, your car, your favorite beach, you shoot what you want to. If you're happy shooting on your phone, then, then do that. Even if that's an iPhone 8 or SE or Android something, the reason I encourage people not to buy a camera and stick with their current smartphone is because the extra money they spend won't really give them a return on that investment. The same applies to upgrading your current phone for the latest model. Save that money, buy a light or something, go on holiday to take some nice photos somewhere different. The iPhone camera is without doubt the best choice for some people. And there's no shame or shade in me saying that. It's a great tool. I use mine all the time. I rarely take photos I love, but that's just me. My Instagram photos get bugger all likes these days anyway, so what do I know? But I like shooting on an actual camera. I've always shot in manual mode because I like to be in control of what the image looks like. If I shoot in auto and lose some highlights, then I'm pissed. If I let the camera decide a setting and it tries to use a slow shutter speed while I'm handheld, then that winds me up and I get a shit photo. I like how full-size lenses look and I'll swear I can see the difference whether I can or not. And I swear phone camera images always look digitally over sharpened or blotchy and artificial. And I haven't so far even compared shooting digitally to shooting on film, but I won't go there, that's, that's too far. But all this is subjective, it's just my opinion. I know some of you in the comments will say things like, I knew those photos at the start weren't on the iPhone 15, they aren't even very good. Or, of course you can tell the difference between the megapixel sizes. Yeah, I know, I know, and I thank you for your engagement. If you're like me and convinced of your own point of view, then I can only imagine your rage at watching to this point of the video. Congratulations on getting this far. And don't even think about saying iPhones are rubbish and it would be a different story with Samsung or a Google Pixel because well, you'd be massively missing the point. What's the point in this video again? Ah, yes. Um, megapixels don't make a great photo. You do. It's got a bit ranty, didn't it? Like and subscribe.